The stakes have never been higher. The competition has never been stronger. 42 drivers, 25 rounds, one will be crowned champion. Competition, commitment, excitement. This is Lionheart. Tune in Wednesday nights on the iRacing Esports Network to watch the cars and stars of Lionheart, the Lionheart IndyCar Series presented by First Medical Equipment. Two rounds left and 76 points are available. With Padovani and Overbay split by only 15 of them, it looks very likely that the BO Racing team will manage a 1-2 finish in the championship. Granted, Australia might have something to say about that. The penultimate round features the daunting and unforgiving Mount Panorama Circuit. With the Radical already known for operating on a knife's edge, it's likely that even small mistakes could cost our championship contenders. Will the BO Racing Team winning streak continue? We'll find out soon as we get ready to watch Round 7 of the Precision Racing League's American iRacing Thursday series. And you'll see it all live here on the Global Sim Racing Channel and the iRacing Esports Network. 
Hi, I'm Joe Peak, and with me in the booth is Taylor Burris. Behind the scenes is our director, Sean Cracker Zambros, and he's using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. Taylor, I have a feeling today's track is going to shake things up a bit in the championship. Yes, indeed. Welcome, everyone, to the Mount Panorama Racing Circuit, or Bathurst. Located in New South Wales, Australia, this four-mile, or 6.2-kilometer, 23-turn circuit opened in 1938 and is the pinnacle of Australian motorsports. With events such as the 12 Hours of Bathurst, along with the Bathurst 1000, drivers from around the world have come to conquer the mountain, yet many have failed. To give you the opportunity to see what it's like to conquer the mountain, though, let's go on board for a GSRC lap guide. All right, we've got Stefan Schlocker and the GSRC Radical, so let's do a lap around Bathurst. Hell Corner will be tempting for overtakes, but smart drivers will try to set themselves up for a good exit out of this 90-degree corner. With it leading onto the mountain straight, coming off with a poor exit will leave you incredibly vulnerable up to Griffin's Bend. And while you often find yourself coming up to here side by side, usually someone's got to give because this off-camber sweeper doesn't offer much grip to the car on the outside. Quickly, you've got to switch sides to set up for the cutting. Even with a downforce on the radical, you've got to lift on your way into this awkward kinked braking zone. The difficulty and blind nature of this section makes it a common spot for track blockages. Now things really get steep as you climb up through Quarry. It's not quite flat out on your way into Reed Park, but you do get to open up again at Frog Hollow. Salman needs one more little confidence lift to avoid the outside wall, and then you tackle McPhillamy. Avoiding the outside curb will be important with how tightly sprung these cars are, but before you know it, you plunge over Skyline. Slowing as you weave through the S's, you come up to the infamous Dipper. The fastest drivers will be the most daring through here and take it right up to the walls at the limit of grip. Through the rest of the S's, it'll be all about setting the car up for the braking into Forest Elbow. Getting the car slowed, let alone on the correct line, is a frustrating exercise. But now that you head onto the Conrad Strait, once again, a good corner exit will be critical. Drivers will hit some incredible speeds once they reach the chase. The kink might be easily flat out, but hitting your braking point accurately for the chicane portion will separate the good from the great. You'll probably see most drivers avoid the curbs around here to allow themselves to apply the power smoothly and confidently. Finally, you've got Murray's Corner, which offers a last-ditch effort to make a pass. But it's deceptively hard to get this simple-looking bend right. However, if you've kept it all together, you've now hopefully finished a lap around Bathurst. Apologies uh, for a few of the uh, technical issues we're experiencing. We'll try to get picture back to you in a moment. But in the meantime, we want to remind you that this uh, season of the American iRacing Thursday series is brought to you by HFD1 Motorsports. Uh, of course, uh, they are a team that competes here in the PRL, and we are very grateful for their generosity for making sure that this whole season of the Radicals comes to air. Taking a look at the points championship. Well, uh, up at the top of the uh, of it, it is still Overbay leading this. But you can see, as I mentioned, uh, Padovani not too far behind. But he's going to have to get some good results over Overbay to be able to take the championship away in these two remaining rounds. Especially since Michael does have pocket points and Jefferson does not. Eric Luke not too far behind from Jefferson himself, but pretty far back from Overbay. He's been on a good run of races, and he's been looking very good in the warm-up today. Mark File drops down, and so does Owen McLaughlin, rounding out our top five in driver standings. Taylor, what are we looking at for the teams? Looking at the team's championship right now is the BO Racing team currently at the top of the leaderboard with 323 points. 22 points back will be the Fraley's Auto Body team, while the Cash for Crash team is in third, some 73 points back, while Blown Tranny Racing and Black Flag Racing round out your top five. Those three two teams are having a little bit difficult to see them, but yet it's finished out strong in the team's championship by the looks of it. But Joe, some of these viewers might think this might be their first time watching this event. So why don't you tell them a little bit more about this series? 
Absolutely. Today's race, as I mentioned, the second to last round, seven out of eight, they get one drop week in this season. Uh, the car still being the Radical SR8 that they're competed in all season long. We'll be back again next season on Thursdays once again. The setups in the car is open. Now, uh, there's quite a bit that you can tweak on these cars to try and get some speed out of them, and certainly have to talk about that a little bit today with this track. Uh, the race distance is 45 minutes, which means because they've limited the fuel cell compared to what the real car has, uh, they will expect one pit stop out on track. They also have an incident cap of 24, but at Bathurst, it's always unlikely that anybody's going to reach <laughs> any sort of incident cap unless it's very, very small, and they have no spare car to save them out there. So, uh, you break it, you bought it, and there's a lot of people who are probably going to wind up breaking it around the walls of Bathurst. Speaking of which, the checkered flag always waiting at the end of things offered to the victor. And Taylor, what's the keys to the race that will allow someone to be that victor? Well, the biggest key will definitely be survival. This track is notorious for causing issues, even for the best of the best drivers here. The circuit is very tight, very difficult to make passes or overtake lap traffic. So the drivers will need to show patience, but yet find the right opportunity to make those passes and hopefully make it stick without hitting any of the walls. Another thing will be a possibility of fuel strategy. Drivers do the fact that they're trying to do well and finish the season off on a high note may do a little bit of strategy changes in order to gain those extra points that they need to build themselves up in the points championship. And then finally, of course, can anybody stop the BO racing team? Padovani, as well as Overbay, have been dominating these past few races now. Will anybody come up and step to the plate and take home a victory here at Mount Panorama? Thanks for that, Taylor. We'll keep an eye on those things as this race plugs away. While we're at it, we do want to mention, if you do an independent vehicle inspection, there's a lot to keep track of. Whether it's an old-school pile of paper documents or a computer full of spreadsheets, it can get overwhelming. But we have great news for you. inspect ride is the fastest way to conduct your vehicle inspections and create reports. You can save time, eliminate paper, keep better inspection records, and simplify your life all from your iPhone, iPad, or Android phone or tablet. You can find out more about this useful app at inspectoride.com slash iRacing. You can even download a free trial to find out if Inspector Ride is right for you. So check it out. Once again, that address is inspectoride.com slash iRacing. Big thanks to Inspector Ride here for sponsoring this race, but also a big thank you goes out to iRacing. Now, uh, you are watching this currently on the iRacing eSports Network, and if you're enjoying it, we highly encourage you to subscribe. All you got to do to do that is click the big red button that says subscribe on their YouTube page, where you can catch not only uh, both the Tuesday and Thursday series here for PRL, but uh, the World Championship, the official World Championship series for iRacing. So please subscribe when you have the time. In the meantime, right now we've got some time to cover the qualifying and up at the top. It is a name that was familiar at the start of the season, but has not since been doing quite as well. Kenny Duvall. Taylor seems to be showing his face well, but it looks like Overbay is following not far behind. Kenny Duvall has been having one of those up and down seasons. He has that win early on at Spa, but yet cannot seem to find the opportunity to come up with a good finish so far after that so he needs to try to find a way unlike Overbay though who's just been absolutely dominating with his teammate Jefferson Padovani those guys are showing excellent speed they seem to have what it takes to hear but another driver I want to look forward to watching is Eric Luke he's been showing excellent speed especially at some of the races recently so I'd like to see what he can do currently sitting p3 on the time charts Little, little correction there. That was Andrew who won the first race. Uh, Duvall came in second, but he did start on the pole in that first race. As Eric Luke just took the pole here today, he narrowly missed out by less than a tenth of a second on the win at Brazil. It looks like he's trying to redeem himself on that one. This is Christian Gritzko on screen. He currently sits in fourth. He's another driver who's been qualifying well, but not uh, quite as successful in race trim. Speaking of that race trim, though, Taylor, I, I mentioned the setup of the cars. This track, uh, almost kind of an extreme version of what we saw at Brazil. You you've got a couple of long, long straights 
I mean, you've got this part that we see grits go on right here. The, the, the mountain section is very, very twisty. So with that knowledge, I mean, as a driver, what do you do? Do you, do you set it up for the straights? Do you set it up for the top of the mountain? High downforce, low downforce, what do you do? That's going to be the difficult part because you want to find that sweet spot. You want to either have the opportunity to where you're very good in all the sections, but preferably it would probably be best to help make sure you have that good enough straightaway speed and you like a little bit of a slipstream to help keep up with the competition. Of course, you do want to make sure that you have good handling, not make sure the car is too loose when you're going down the hill because that's going to be the most treacherous part once you get up to the dipper and, of course, force elbow where a lot of action can happen and problems as well. Yes, indeed. Up atop the mountain, you uh, see quite a few problems, including track blockages. We mentioned it in the lap guide. I wouldn't be uh, too shocked if something like that happened. Thankfully, though, we don't have too many cars uh, out there today. As uh, I think we're at 21 at the moment that are currently out in qualifying. Currently, we're watching Jefferson Padovani, the Brazilian who won his home race. Uh, looks to be doing a little bit of the same as what he did before, where he tried to give himself a fun time coming through the field at Interlagos and wound up actually winning the whole thing. Right now, he's down at 11th. And it looks like on top of the screen, uh, Eric Lewis, Luke has extended his gap to now half a second over Kenny Duvall. The 09 car is absolutely flying today. So setting himself up well to potentially take this win away. Watching Padovani now finish this lap. He's going to be able to get this one in and maybe one more, depending on if he wants it. Depending on if he improves, I suppose. He's earned the nickname Glitter Pants, and right now those Glitter Pants are scooting their way on into the pit lane, so that's the last of his qualifying, with not the greatest of pit entry, it looks like, on top of it. Duvall also abandons his lap. Christopher Richards down in seventh coming to finish. And I think as the uh, clock ticks down, most of both Richards and the car in front of him, Paul Wildridge, will be able to finish their laps. Daniel Barnett, I think, should be able to get by, but every car beyond that, might not be able to get through. Oh, Wildridge, the Hoosier, off the track. That's going to be it for his qualifying. Christopher Richards, with about 30 seconds to go, should be able to sneak across the timing line. Yeah, it's a good line, doing a great speed. Let's see what he can do going through the final corner of Murray's, which is a very difficult corner. It's a little bit off camera, so the car can get easily light on the corner exit. So he actually does not improve his time. So he has a little bit of work to do starting in the back of tops inside the top 10 as Barnett now comes across the line, did not count. Must have had uh, one of those rare off tracks around here somewhere. Time is over though now and Phil Gilman is gonna be the first across. He sits in 15, second to last of the cars who've actually gotten a time. And uh, let's see what Phil does as he crosses. I think that last one did not count for him, unfortunately. So he will not improve. Tyler Gore going to be the next one to cross. He did not have a time on the board. Now he does at a 204. That puts him in 14th. Good enough for the mid pack. Let's see who else we have left coming in. Spicer's going to abandon his lap. This is Christopher Richards, who we saw uh, finish his and is coming around. And I think, no, he's not going to be the last one to cross. He's coming through the dipper now. Currently sits in seventh, about two seconds back from our pole sitter. That, that gives us an idea, Taylor, of just how long a lap is around here, even in these fast, fast cars, uh, that two seconds separate them even in seventh place. It is um, quite incredible, and actually it's amazing to see how these radicals can run under the two-minute mark. It's amazing. Even faster and professional GT3 drivers have a difficulty of trying to hit that famous under two-minute mark here at Mount Panorama. So drivers are doing exceptionally well if they're able to hit that mark, as we see Christopher Richards now coming through the final section of the chase. Down towards Murray's. Let's see what the 49 has got underneath him. The Midwest driver hits the final corner. Stay oh, oh, big bobble way off the apex. That certainly won't help. But he's still the fastest that he's been all qualifying at two flat two. Doesn't give him a position, unfortunately. 
Barnett is, uh, as Padovani abandons his lap, Daniel Barnett, in the meantime, comes across and does not improve his time. That's going to be the last of our qualifying here for round seven of the American iRacing Thursday series. That takes us to the grid. Starting on the pole, it will be Eric Luke with Kenny Duvall starting in second behind him. It's been a while since we've seen Kenny up at the front in qualifying. Michael Overbay, current points leader, is on row two in third. He essentially just has to get a couple good finishes all the way to the rest of the season, and he's got a championship. Paul Wildridge will be next to him in fourth. Christian Gritzko will be starting P5, and Mark File on the outside of row three and six. Christopher Richards didn't improve his time, even though, or didn't improve his position, even though he improved his time. He'll be starting in seventh with Matthew Gunderson in eighth, Daniel Barnett in ninth, and Karsten Quint is going to round out our top ten. Starting in the eleventh position will be Jefferson Padovani alongside Richie Pittinger in the twelfth position, Andrew Spicer in the thirteenth position alongside Tyler Gore, Denny Duchesne in the fifteenth position alongside Phil Guillaume in sixteenth, while Ronald McManus will round out the seventeen cars that have qualified. Eric Harmon, Kerlin Andrews, and Gary Schillings did not set a qualifying time. And I see every single car currently in the server, so we should have all of them out there on the grid. As you can see, a number of them already lining up. The good thing about the small field, I suppose, is that I don't think we'll have anybody lining up around Murray's corner it can always be tricky from a standing start trying to come off of a curve. You can see down the relatively short front stretch compared at least to the Mountain Straight and the Conrad Straight. They're going to be blasting towards Hell Corner and then taking off for 45 minutes here in the penultimate round of the American iRacing Thursday series. Can Eric Luke finally get himself his first win of the season? He's taken multiple podiums so far but he has not stood on that top step. Just waiting for Daniel Barnett to come out to the grid and then we'll get the lights up and we'll go racing. So we look at uh, that grid of cars shining in the Australian sun, only uh, 80 degrees on the surface of the track, 65 actually out in the air. So what, uh, what I imagine would be considered a very cool day in the middle of February here. Lights are now up. Engines start to rev. Green flag is out and off the line. Eric Luke looks decent, at least in the first part. Same thing with Kenny Duvall. In fact, most of the drivers look pretty smooth. We got a little bit of a challenge up for fourth place. Moving down the inside. Oh, and a big bobble as uh, who is that going off track? That is Christian Gritzko, who immediately loses places time after time as they climb up the mountain straight. Let's watch them now head into Griffins. See the top three is single file right now. It's going to be a big help, but we got to keep an eye on Paul Wildridge as long as Mark File. They might be going side by side into Griffin's Bend. Looks like it's going to be nice and smooth. No major incidents, though, going into Griffin's Bend, which can be a dangerous corner for a lot of drivers. So far, so good. It starts to narrow up as the climb gets steeper and steeper. A few challenges towards the back of the pack, you can see, but otherwise, most of the front of the field is single file just looking to try and survive rather than take advantage in one of the more dangerous places. Over through McPhillamy, Eric Luke leads the way into the downhill for the first time through the S's, looking nice and smooth as Kenny Duval follows him. Michael Overbay in third, being challenged by Paul Wildridge, who stays very close behind. Cars start to thicken up as it hits the mid-pack. A lot of drivers are being very patient through the first lap here. They don't want to make sure they take their car out very easily. Seems like no issues at all as they make the run out of Forest Elbow and down the Conrad straight. Joe's just a nice single file of a bunch of radicals coming down. That looks like Caution is leading the day. We got a little bit of a battle there. Uh, looks like between the likes of Gunderson and Gritzko. Gritzko trying to come back from his error. This is for seventh as they hit the chase. Gritzko is going to be ahead, takes a little bit of curb, but survives it. Next up on his chart is Christopher Richards to try and take the P6. The chase is a good opportunity to make a 
a lot of passes through there if you're careful and try to be careful not to over break and overshoot the breaking zone. You can easily go off course and lose a lot of more time and position. So Crisco made a smart move of making sure he breaks at the right, right time as we're riding now on board with Mike Oakley. Okay, what competition with Paul Rogers coming in? Indeed, got a fantastic run off the corner on over bay, but decides to give up on it as he lifts up into Griffin's Bend. Still, that's going to keep Mark File close behind him in fifth, and Christopher Richards even closing it a little bit with him not willing to try to make the overtake quite yet. And they work through Quarry for the second time. I can report that Luke has extended the gap over Duval by about seven tenths of a second. So, not certainly dominating the fields here after the, a lap and a half, Taylor, but uh, holding his own. Oh, yeah. Wildridge had a problem. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Not sure what happened here. But it looks. All right, we've got the replay up. Did he put the wall somewhere? Because he just started slowing from what I saw. It looks like he did hit the wall somewhere. It looks like around Corey's corner by the looks of it. But unfortunate for him, had a lot of damage to that radical. It's going to be very difficult for him to make any passes. And it looks like he might be coming down pit road. Yeah, he's already down to 17th. You can see the damage on the left side of the car. He's hit more stuff meanwhile padovani continuing his now traditional climb i suppose he's up to seventh having recently overtaken gunderson and left uh, him to deal with barnett behind them actually that's a battle about to get a little bit thick there you can see ducking to the inside that's barnett trying to make an overtake down into murray's corner but taylor uh, didn't look like it was going to happen no he's going to have to back off and wait again he could try again though going into hell's corner a good up place to make a pass though but he's not close enough to for it right now so he's going to try to utilize the slipstream make sure to get a good exit off and go down the mountain straight before they get to the bend they'll start to spread apart a little bit up the mountain straight oh except for fourth where uh that is the likes of christian gritsko just having overtaken mark file he utilized the slipstream, got right to the inside. Mark File, though, did not contest with him because he knew better not to do that going into Griffin's Bend this early. So they're now making their run up the quarry and into the cutting right now. Get through Frog Hollow and now Salmon. Gritsko starting to pull away. Clearly he was being bottled up quite a bit because File already looking at a mirror full of Christopher Richards. The number 49 follows him through the S's down into the dipper. Just going to have to be single file for the moment and also deal with a three car battle now because that's Jefferson Padovani that you see in the orange and black car. Let's see if he can get a good run out of the force elbow before they head to call it the right straight. I mean, he's got a good run. He's closing in. He's going to utilize the slipstream to maybe take a peek to the inside before they hit the chase. He's closing in. He's going to look for that inside. This is going to be a good pass, possibly, for Padovani if he can hold on as he makes the run to the chase. Wow. Look at how once he hit that air, the car just stalled out, though. Looks like Richard's not willing to risk it uh, and let him through into the chase. Off the corner, a little bit loose is Padovani. Mark File next up ahead of him, looking to see if he can get fourth place away from him. Padovani is already into the top five having started this thing in 11th. What a drive indeed for Jefferson Padovani. He is definitely a man on a mission. We could maybe see him up on the podium position before this is all said and done. So we'll definitely have to keep an eye on Jefferson Padovani. Getting some uh, interesting news from the peanut gallery. It sounds like uh, Richards has actually been given team orders not to crash. So I guess he's being a little bit patient here, but not patient is the driver of Jefferson Padovani. He gets by Mark File into Griffin's Bend. He's now up to fourth with an eye on the podium because Gritsko is only half a second up the road. And he is closing in fast right now as they come out of the cutting into Corey's corner. He's doing a great job. you got to be careful through this section, especially if you're dealing with traffic. 
that area is very easy to where the track can be blocked and you just have nowhere to go. Thankfully, it's a small field, so it wouldn't be that much of an issue right now, but from past experience running here at Bothurst, and especially this 12-hour event earlier this year, it was very difficult to get through a, basically a blocked track. I'm, I'm just realizing we failed to report that Kenny Duvall has had something happen. Uh, Duvall it apparently happened a few minutes ago. I just, I thought I saw a car blink, but I thought it was a connection issue. It must have been something up on the mountain. I'm going back to check. I don't think we necessarily have a replay. Oh, it was in the asses down towards the dipper. Meanwhile, already third changing hands. Jefferson Padovani side by side with Gritsko. This is kind into the chase. Ball. And out of the chase, he's got it. Did you see who it was? Bill Gielman, this is over at Forrest Elbow. He is completely turned around, cannot get his car back pointing the right direction right now. This is right before they get to Forrest Elbow. Let's take a look. Yeah, he was caught in a very, very awkward place. There you see the results of it. Yeah, it looks like coming out of the, yeah, the dipper, he, he took a little damage and that's maybe unfortunately started off this set of events. And then we don't have to watch all of this because he had to wait patiently a long, long time for an opening over that blind crest. He's now limping his way to uh, the, uh, the pits. The gap from first to second, well, it's a monstrous seven seconds now. Overbay holding down P2. He's got Padovani hurrying up behind him, trying to chase him down, and Eric Luke stretching away ahead of him. Eric's doing a great job of keeping the car nice and smooth through the sections of the track. I mean, it's just impressive of how well the Club Florida driver is able to master this track right now. I mean, just beautiful driving that we see coming out of Eric Luke tonight. I think he's got the bit between his teeth. I, I, I have to imagine that Luke was disappointed with that P2, especially how close he was to the win. We ride on board with Padovani in the meantime, who's trying to leave Gritsko behind, but Christian's making him work hard for it. Making sure to threaten him if uh, he has any sort of error. Down into the chase. Padovani still trying to gain time on Overbay. It's 1.7 between them. Ooh, Grisco gets laid onto the braking, gets a good entry in there, and also is able to keep it going and get a great exit off before they head into Murray's. So he is definitely trying to find a way to get to the back bumper of Padovani right now. A little bit behind them. I'm not sure if this is a battle or not because we, we understand that Richards has some orders to play it safe, but he's been hugging the gearbox of Mark File for quite a while. In fact, he's been within half a second for much of the time, but just just doesn't look interested in going by. Which Taylor, that that says to me that maybe he's just kind of following those orders and saying, "All right, let's let's save risky maneuvers till the end, maybe." Now, well, if you say that now, he's lifting early right now, so he's definitely following those team orders. Maybe maybe if Mark File makes a mistake, he might go for it if it's not going to be too risky for him. But they're now making their way up through the cutting right now. Got to hug right up against that wall as best you can, but without hitting it can be the most difficult part. I mean, Richard's just doing a great job of keeping it clean and safe. We ride now on the tail of Richie Pittenger. This is looking back at Danny Duchesne fighting for eighth position, climbing up through glory and over the crest. Looks like we struggle a little bit to stay right behind him. Now that they've gotten into the twisty parts, he was certainly closing on the mountain straight, it looked like, Taylor. He did, but once they got up towards the cutting and everything, that he just cannot keep up quite, quite well. Maybe the car was a little bit too loose, or he maybe not felt comfortable enough to try to keep up in case the likes of Pittenger making a mistake in front of Duchesne. So that way, Duchesne has a little bit of that space to maybe make a maneuver if need be to get around him without damaging his car. But gets a great exit, though, off of Griffin's a force elbowed to make a run down the Conrad Strait. See if this is enough of a run. He gets into the slipstream. Oh, in the meantime, 
Look at this. This is teammates up against each other. Overbay and Padavani. And actually, they've sw they've swapped positions. Did that just happen to the chase now? Down Conrad straight. Apparently, we saw it on screen. I was paying attention to that battle for eighth. And then Padavani, with that little bit of slipstream, managed to give himself the fastest lap of the race. Oh, he's got some work to do, though. Nine, uh, almost ten seconds, Taylor, up to Eric Luke. Pretty much the entire mountain straight is what Eric Luke has over the likes of Padavani. So Eric Luke is basically in his own zip code right now, doing a great job. He's got 32 minutes to close in on him. We'll keep an eye on the pace between himself and Eric. I haven't been watching it before now, so I'm not sure if he's faster. And he's had to overtake cars. He's now got a bunch of clear road. So we'll wait and see. In the meantime, still close for fifth place. But that's still Christopher Richards and Mark File. Uh, oh, and, and Eric Luke with a problem. Eric Luke is, is into the wall. This happened through Quarry. He gets it going, but he's in fourth place now, and he definitely has some damage. Let's see if we can see what happened on the replay in Salmon Park. You're going to see out of the cutting. Car looks pretty good here. Does it just get loose or does he clip the wall? What is he? Oh, yeah. Clips Clipped it, it on entry. Right there. And then that just caught the car real loose. Wow, it, it looks so subtle and it, it just sent him around, Taylor. It did, and it's very, not, not, it's basically like a kiss on that wall that he did, so it's not like it's a major hit. I mean, I'm looking at the car right now, and there's not a whole lot of damage to it. Maybe a small little dent in the rear, but other than that, I mean, the car looks to be running fine. We'll have to take a look at that next time by at his lap time, see how he's running right now, but he's got a lot of work to do now. And he's only just completing that current lap. Uh, behind him had a bit of a scary moment. You could see that Richards has backed off of file while he outbraked himself coming into Murray's, but didn't have an off, not really worth a replay. Uh, just apparently he's got to regroup and maybe refocus a little bit, still trying to follow those team orders. This puts Padovani into the lead and Overbay into second. Now, Taylor, these are our championship points leaders, but in reverse order. So what is this going to say between the 69 and the 68? Do they? Do you think they'll be fighting it out for the lead, considering they've got a championship to worry about? Oh, or? Chris goes gets loose and then losing in the cutting right quick. Sorry to bump in like that, but he is stuck on the track and has got to get it around. Oh, oh, no! Oh, and he does get hit. That's Christopher Richards who got him. Mark File maybe clipped him as well. Let's see if we can get a replay of this. Uh, I always hate when people spin in the cutting. It's it's so hard to get turned around, Taylor. But uh, I, I mean, if you if you sit there, you're going to get hit as well. Yeah, you got to try to get out of there as quickly and as cleanly as possible. Of course, also keeping an eye on other oncoming traffic. You got to listen to your spotter as quickly as you can and make those quick decisions when he tells you it's clear. But as you can see, unfortunate for uh, Christopher Richards. Uh, not going to be able to follow the team orders to an absolute T tonight by the looks of it. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't put the blame on him, though. Meanwhile, uh, Eric Luke had a, a problem as well and has taken a toe. He got himself turned around, I think. Did he hit the wall in the S's? No, I think he, I think he just turned it around. Must have been from that damage. Let's see here. And Gritzko is his teammate. He was the one that we saw spin just a bit ago. Or is that File, actually? I think that's File. Yeah, he just... He just called it a day. Oh, he did hit the wall a little, it looks like, there. In fourth place... Christopher Richards still going with a little bit of damage on his nose, making that contact. But now he's ahead of Christian Gritzko. Looks like his straight line speed isn't too hurt, Taylor. No, not too bad. I mean, Gritzko does have a little bit of run, but that's because of the slipstream right now as they go into Griffin's bend. 
let's see how the handling of Gritsko car will be as they make the run through the mountain area part of the track up into the cutting right now he's able to maybe hook get a better way to compare to last lap actually closing in on the back bumper of Richards right now as they make the run up to Corey we're barely a third through the race at this point and by the way we do expect pit stops to happen pretty soon but out of our 20 starters we've got uh let's see it looks like six uh, 14 cars left because we do have Paul Wildridge back out. Eric Luke just went in, so Gary Schilling is the last one on the lead lap in 13th. But attrition rearing that ugly head. Remember that keys to victory. Survival is going to be the biggest one to get a good finish here or even win the race. So some of these drivers are heating that council. Other than that, most of them are going to end up on pit road before the match up. Riding on board with the Canadian Christian Gritsko in the slipstream of Richards. Now he's really starting to gain as the speeds get higher and higher into the kink of the chase. And he's already well passed by the braking zone. You can move Gritsko back up to fourth. Gritsko hit the curbing a little bit right there. Almost thought he would have lost it a little bit, but was able to keep it under control. Great run for Christian Gritsko, the Canadian driver, into Murray's corner. He's going to pull out a nice gap over Christopher Richards. Got a little bit of a battle going on between Pittenger and Quint here. This is for a top 10. And it looks like Quint going to back out of it as they hit Murray's. I can report we've had more cars return. It's not just Paul Wildridge uh, out there, although he's taken a, a pit stop. I think that might be scheduled. Gilman and McManus have returned to the track after there a lot goes, of repairs. There goes Pittenger losing it at Hell's Corner. Oh. Wow. Just spun it around. Smacked the wall. Gets it going once again. The Texas driver. Oh, and he's going to have to take a tow. Look at that. My goodness, they are dropping like flies. Back on fourth place. Uh, oh, actually going to uh, eighth place here as it uh, looks like Danny Duchesne challenging Curlin Andrew, a round one winner. Both of those drivers teammates. Danny Duchesne doing a really great job in this radical Watching him in the GTE cars, he has have some good runs. But here in the Radicals, it seems like he's been he is, is more his style of racing, as he's been able to have great runs all season long. Right now, currently right behind his teammate Curlin Andrew, as they come out of Forest Elbow, got a great run. He's not going to be able to close any gap right now to Curlin, but right not too far up the head road is Matthew Gunderson, who they can easily close the gap to quick quickly. Yeah, only second and a half up. And let's stay on this, but just to report, Padovani is pulling away from Overbay now. It's about two seconds between them. It looks like the Brazilian has the legs over his Buckeye teammate, unfortunately for him. Ready to have to see the points. I know they can get two bonus points, or actually potentially three bonus points, I should say, I believe. And... Uh, so there is stuff on hands. Oh, Christopher Richards is in. He's in his pit road. Up. This is a scheduled pit stop. They are within their pit window right now. As also Ronald McManus comes in pit road as well. He's already a couple of laps down, currently sitting 17th overall in the positions. Christopher Richards probably going to get a little bit of damage repair as well as getting fuel and tires by the looks of it. As you can see, the jacks go up on the car finishing his pit stop he's going to be back out on track momentarily probably right around ninth or 10th currently seventh position as they look at the time charts and while you were looking at that i was checking to see what points were on offer and the uh difference oh as we got a little bit of a battle for seventh once again duchene closing or excuse me no this is a uh, harman closing on duchene so Danny, having dropped off of Curlin, is now playing the rear guard. They work their way over the top of the mountain. It's going to take a little bit of patience for Harmon to have a chance. Yeah, going through the dipper is a very difficult part of the track. The car gets very light when you make that downhill section of the track. 
you have to be patient. Make sure you kind of drag the brakes in some parts of the track in order to make sure you keep up with the right amount of speed and, of course, not wanting to lose control of the car. And then, of course, Forrest Elbow is a whole nother animal. I'd have to say one of the most difficult corners on the circuit because it's almost a bank but also down the corner. So you have to be very careful with your throttle input. Otherwise, you will easily push the car up into the wall or spin it on entry. Yeah, and I always hated that, the braking zone of Forrest Elbow. Just so frustrating to get through there. And frustrating probably describes things for Duchesne a little bit right now, who was hoping to get a position away and is now looking to keep from giving a position away with Harmon, who we right on board with right now, closing in bit by bit. It is three points difference from first to second. Uh, I can report. So even if uh, Padovani beats Overbay uh, from first to second place, if Overbay finishes his second and, and Padovani wins uh, each of the remaining races, he will not catch him in the points. But that's before we take into account bonus points. Uh, so he is going to have to rely, I think, on the number 68, losing a couple spots either this race or the next one. Four cars now battling for the fifth position. We have Gunderson, who's in fifth position, followed by Curlin Andrew, Danny Duchesne, and then Eric Harmon. Four cars battling up the mountain as they come out of Corey's corner. Boy, you talk about uh, Jefferson Padovani's climb from 11th to 1st. Uh, Curlin Andrew, who's currently the second in this train, he's sitting in sixth. Uh, he started from 19th. Now, he didn't have a qualifying time. So, as Bill would say, that would nullify any sort of hard charger award, but he's survived where other drivers have not, and he's showed some speed to look at a potential top five. I'd say Curlin Andrews doing pretty good. I mean, a phenomenal job for Curlin. Even though he didn't get that qualifying time, he still is a man on the mission, going to be possibly breaking into the top five here as they head down the Conrad straight before they hit to the chase. He's got a good bit of this draft right now. He's going to take a peek to the inside. Oh, yeah, he's got this pass before they get even into the chase. Matthew Gunderson just gives way, does not want to be a car or a victim of the mountain again. Nicely done by the number 12. In the meantime, I think we had an incident with Tyler Gore somewhere, but I don't think we necessarily have a replay. He's been sitting in the pits for a long, long time. Doesn't Even if it is scheduled, this does not look like a regular pit stop for the number 77. Richards is in. And Danny Duchesne is coming in for a scheduled stop, too. Canadian trundles down towards his stall, finds it, and plops it in. Now down to 20 minutes left to go. We're waiting on a number of front runners to take their stop. So we take a look at fifth place. Andrew now having got by Gunderson. Pulled away super quick, but has at least put himself a small buffer uh, between the number 33 and the 617. Excuse me, 12 and 33. He's doing a great job right now, Curlin. Pull that gap away over Matthew Gunderson as they make the run up towards the skyline, the highest point of the track. Quite amazing to sit there in the grandstand. I mean, it's a beautiful circle. Right now, that battle's heating up as Harmon is now closing into the back bumper of Matthew Gunderson. Yeah, and how far out you can see before you plunge back into the trees here from onboard Harmon gives you a good sense of the uh, elevation change from up there down to here as you get towards the bottom, dropping and dropping down the Conrod straight. Got awful close to the back through Forrest's elbow, but it almost looked like it interrupted his momentum slightly. but he is not giving up though as they go into the chase Gunderson does not want to battle in there and lets him go a little bit of a back and forth uh, actually not a back and forth that's Gunderson giving up two positions in two laps actually meanwhile Mark File who I think may, may have had a little bit of contact earlier when we saw Gritzko have his spin and try to get turned around let's see if we have a longer stop for the triple seven at all 
He's otherwise been running fine. Gunderson comes in from seventh. Gunderson doing a great job. No damage to the car by the looks of it. Just a quick fuel and tires possibly. Mark Violet's also still in pit road trying to get his services completed as he goes pulls away. So who is our highest pitter? It's going to be Mark File now. He exits ahead of Danny Duchesne, who I believe is going to be the next one out. Nope, not quite. I think, uh, it oh, oh, just barely by the likes of Matthew Gunderson, actually. So he does become the next car out. Gunderson misses out by a couple tenths. Oh, but he's ready to go now and can make a run up to Griffin's Bend. He's going to be closing on to the back bumper of Danny Duchesne. So this will be the battle for P8 because these two drivers have already made their pit stop. They are going to be ready to go. Outbraked himself really bad in Griffin's Bend, though. Went off into the marbles and managed to collect it before it found the wall. But what was about two tenths between himself and Duchesne is now nearly a second once they hit the top of the hill. It's amazing, just one small corner can mess you up and makes you lose so much time, especially on a track like this. So unfortunate for the likes of Gunderson to mess up on that section of the track. Still waiting for drivers to come in. Fans of uh, Richards, unfortunate news. He has uh, decided to call it a day. This is our leader, Jefferson Padovani. He didn't pit this last time by Overbay didn't pit. Gritsko has elected to continue on. And then we get to fourth place, which is actually incredibly close. Andrew and Harmon. Eric Harmon's been a little bit racy here tonight. As they go down into Hell's Corner, he gets a great exit, but not close enough right now. He's going to hopefully utilize the slipstream as we see right in front of him. Curlin, Andrew taking a defensive line, making sure to where Eric has to take the long way around up Griffin's Bend. Not close enough. He's going to try, though. He's closing in now. He's going to maybe take a peek. No, nope, he has to back off a little bit as they go into Griffin's Bend. Great driving for both of them, especially for Curlin being a little bit on the defensive side. They try to keep Eric Harmon behind him. And looking at things, Eric effectively followed Curlin through. Now, he started one position ahead of Curlin, but they are fourth and fifth, whereas they started 18th and 19th. Not been able to be separated quite yet. Oh, my goodness. I'm looking at my timing and scoring. I see very, very few cars still running right now. Yeah, probably around under, right around 10, if not less than that, by the looks of it. So. Mount Panorama has definitely claimed plenty of victims here on this circuit. Ooh, oh, it's and there's Andrew. another oh. one. Curlin Andrew, the next victim. He's stuck in the wall and he can't get out. He's glitched. This was out of the dipper. Man, Duchesne was looking so, or excuse me, Andrew was looking so smooth. quarry that we're seeing on the replay now. Wow, that, that is just so disappointing for the Texas driver, Taylor, because I I thought the way he'd been driving, he was going to be able to fight for this, uh, this top five all the way to the checkers. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, it's not surprising, though, in this section of the track. Right here through the dipper, the car just bottoms out from you and you just sometimes when a car gets loose like that you have no control up uh, at the front as we come back live both Padovani and Overbay have come in for their scheduled stops with about a third of the race left to go Harmon follows them in he of course gains a position with uh, Curlin Andrew having his woes Gritsko did not pit though he stays out he's going to lead a lap and Karsten Quint did not. Gary Schilling, the last car uh, that we are waiting to take a pit stop. Otherwise, everybody has come in and out. Oh, Duchesne now with an issue. Not a good night for the boat driver team, team as they are uh, having so many issues right now with Duchesne now having an issue. This looks like right around the chase. Yep, you're going to see on the replay a little bit of that inside curb. Wow, and very little of it. 
and it starts handling like a boat. So the banana boat team aptly named for the moment until he gets back to the asphalt and into the pits. He does have a little damage on the right side, it looks like, as well. So is Gritsko coming in this time or not? The Canadian coming down to the chase now. The... Go ahead. Be safe to say that he should be coming down this lap. I mean, we've seen earlier in the season where drivers did not pit at all, but with how Gritsko's car is, and as well as the possibility of everyone else having already pitted, it would not be surprised as he's now coming in. Of course, this pit road is by far one of the most interesting pit roads I've seen as far as trying to make it down. You have a lot of the twisty bits, almost like running a smaller road course before you hit, hit pit road. I've seen some drivers try to cut that. As we now see Jefferson Panavani now take the lead back over once he comes past down pit road. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I've I've done so many broadcasts with this circuit where drivers throw away a good race by botching the pit entry. Padovani back up to P1, over Bay up to two. Gritsko hits his stall. Now, will he be able to get back out in third? That's the question. Files coming down the front stretch. Gritsko is out. It's going to be awful close. They're going to be side by side, but momentum favors Mark File. He moves himself into the podium position. And what's amazing is Mark File's car is pretty much pristine. No major damage to the car, so he's definitely having a drive here tonight make the run up to Griffin's Bend though. Christian Gritzko is going to have something to say about it. We could be seeing a battle for the final cut stop on the podium right here as they make the run up to the cutting. Getting on board looking back at the likes of Christian Gritzko probably ruining his mistake in that very corner in the cutting. But he stays with him for now. We have eight cars left on the lead lap but I believe we only have uh, 13 still running. A number have gotten their cars fixed and back out to see if they can salvage a few points. Through Skyline now with this battle for the final podium position. It is still Mark File leading Christian Gritzko. And Gritzko is really applying the pressure as we ride on board. He gets really close, has to almost lock up the brakes just a little bit, going out of Forrest's elbow. I mean, it's just incredible what you can do in these radicals as they make the run down the Conrad Strait. He's going to try to utilize the slipstream now to close that gap. He's not close enough to make a pass right now, but I'm pretty sure before they get to the chase, he will be on the back bumper. He's closing. He's closing. They hit the kink, and he's not close enough. Ritzko just going to stay in line, slightly different lines as Christian's somewhat wide through the chase costs himself a tenth or two he's going to have at least a number of other laps left to try and make this happen about four or five on the charts for him before the checkers wave six laps to go so christian gritzko is going to have to try to do it right here as they come out of hells down the mountain straight he had been having great runs down these straightaways, so he definitely has the right car set up for the straight line speed. Let's see what he's going to do. It looks like Mark Files not taking that defensive line up to Griffin, so he's think, feeling confident that Gritsko is not going to be able to make a pass right here. This looks like Gritsko does have a little bit more wing than File. Because he just he doesn't catch him all that quickly on those long straights. Towards the end of the straight, he will get to the back bumper of Mark File, but of course you do got to remember that Gritsko does have that damage a little bit, so that could be a hindrance as well. Maybe not as severe, but still can cause a, maybe a small bit of speed losing, especially on the straightaways. This would be where he would shine up on the top of the mountain, and he is closing. He is within about three tenths of a second on the back of Mark File, doing great through the dipper. What about Force Elbow? Can he get himself enough of a run close enough? Both of them really pushing it. And I don't know. He's a little closer, Taylor, but is this enough? 
I don't think it's enough right now. He's going to have to try again, maybe up to the chase. He had a great entry in there last time around, but it looks like he's got a good run right now. He's going to take a peek to the inside, side by side, before they get to the chase. Will Mark be aggressive or back off? He's going to back off right now. Maybe, back, uh, maybe Mark looking to see if he's got the straight line speed to challenge him back, but he's got to hope that Gritsko does not run away from him. Number 28 comes around to complete yet another lap. Meanwhile, down in fifth, do we have another battle starting to brew? This is Gunderson and Harmon. Eric Harmon flipping the curb a little bit, but is able to keep the car controlled nicely now as they head down the main straight towards Hell Corner. Eric Harmon, a great job for this driver. I mean, running in around the top five could have a possibility to maybe get by Matthew Gunderson. I mean, Eric's just been doing a phenomenal job here. Down the mountain straight they go. Let's see what he's able to do. Maybe take a peek to the inside before they head to Griffin's Bend. Can report there was no change of position ahead of them, but we could have a change of position as he pokes his nose in. But Eric Harmon can't get the job done. Matthew Gunderson denies him for now. Uh, the one up in third that I was talking about ahead of these two, Gritsko still leads file by about eight tenths of a second. The break lockup from both Harmon and Gunderson as they came out of the cutting up the his corner now. Be careful not to lose control of the car now. They head up towards the skyline. This is the corner right here where it's very difficult. If you clip too much of those curvings, you will easily lose the car. That's where our team, our Mercedes, end up. Ooh, as we see, Gunderson missed his line right there. Ooh, not the place that you want to miss your line. Coming down the S's into the dipper. So little runoff in that section. Still didn't cost him too much as Harmon tries to run him down. Alrighty, he is within the draft. So they plunge down in elevation along the Conrad Strait towards the chase. Harmon only three tenths back, two tenths back, one tenths back. He ducks out to the side. This one looking a lot better than when he was on the mountain straight. He's fully passed now. They come into the chase, and Gunderson can do nothing about it as Harmon now moves up from the fifth. Textbook pass here at Mount Panorama with Eric Harmon making that pass on Gunderson. Move him to P5. With that battle uh, having settled itself out, let's glance at third, because Christian and Mark still close to one another, but I don't see any attacks happening coming up to Griffin's Bend. And as these two have been driving, they've been holding station behind Overbay at uh, just about 10 seconds, but Overbay has been losing Padovani lap by lap from first to second place it is 12 seconds now. Safe to say that Padovani has definitely found the right line and the right setup. I mean, I'm pretty sure Overbay and then have the same kind of setup to be teammates and all, but Padovani's just in a different zip code over his teammate. So this could be the opportunity to where we see who really could be the winner of this championship. And you, you have to wonder, what if Padovani had some better results earlier in the season? I, I feel like he would have dominated this championship, but it was so topsy-turvy the first two races that it was hard to pick out a winner as everybody adjusted to the cars. This is our current leader right now, but second in the championship points, Jefferson Padovani on screen. But what ifs uh, are asked all the time in racing. And the only thing that has answered that in history, Taylor, is when you get out on the track and you actually perform. Exactly. Going out there, performing to the best of your abilities will get... Oh, as he actually uh, messes That's up on mistake. Hell's Corner. That's a mistake hmm. that we I never thought I would see. Well... It, I mean, that's a good place to have it <laughs> out of exactly. all the corners on this track. A little bit of runoff to where you can easily get the car turned back around if needed, but uh, that gap now is going to shrink a little bit now over Bay. Now might sense something as they, he heads up in the Griffin's Bend. No problems there. So maybe just a small malfunction with the computer. Maybe his screen might have blacked out briefly. Who knows? He's going to hope that doesn't happen again. 
think maybe Gritzko had uh, a mistake somewhere. Oh, yes, he did. He lost a position. This was in Murray's corner. Here we go on the replay. The Canadian were riding on board. Is this a curb, Taylor? Looking at it right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, indeed. He hit the curbing. Curbs are not your friend here at Bathurst. I mean, they can definitely we, mess up your race. If we come back live, he had an accident. He spun it into the cutting. And his race is over. He's towed the car. Similar to Curl and Andrew. Unfortunately, the front wheel gets a little bit stuck in the wall. And due to the nature of sim racing, a small glitch has meant he is unable to continue. Oh. Unfortunate for Gritzko. That was going to be another good finish for him as well. So both he and Andrew have been bitten by the mountain. Now, who's this leaving the pits? McManus, it looks like. He is, he's actually our last car running. He's just going to get in. He, he's not running for safety rate here, but I guess he's just uh, looking for pride. Just to finish the race. That's a good thing. Congratulations. Brian will try to hold on for a little bit these last two minutes. Maybe he can bring it home. The, uh, the Dory Award winner for today, I suppose. All right, so how many do we have left now in these final two minutes? So far, there's five cars left on the lead lap out of 20 starters. Let's see. Schilling's still going. Gore, that's two. Uh, Spicer, three. Richards, four. Duvall, five. And McManus is six. So that is 11 cars still out on track. It's amazing how quickly drivers can make mistakes and how quickly the field can shrink in just 45 minutes i mean we started off with 20 cars and before it's all almost half the field gone so it just shows the difficulty of this track and how just one small mistake or just a clipping of us the wall can cost you the entire race and of those five that are on the lead lap uh the top five well, only one of them started in the top five. That's Overbay. Otherwise, Padovani started from 11th. Mark File from 6th. Eric Harmon from 18th. Matthew Gunderson from 8th. 30 seconds left on the clock for this man, Jefferson Padovani. So he will be getting the white flag as he crosses the Conrad Strait as long as it is. Not long enough. Uh, for him to be able to take the checkers this time by. Although he could try to slow up, but I believe iRacing still would give him the white flag. He's got 22 seconds back to Mark File, and it's... Oh, something happened to Overbay. Overbay with an issue in a uh, forest elbow. And, and this has championship implications. Let's look at the replay. You can see he's absolutely limping. His saving grace is going to be that very few cars will be able to overtake him with it being one lap to go. Car just snapped loose as they, before he gets in the forest elbow, lost it under braking and into the barrier he goes. Unfortunate for Michael Overbay, the Buckeye driver now. He's going to try to maybe still keep going or has he towed it in? Oh, he's still, still going. Yeah, seeing that he's continuing on. Now, did we actually... No, no, it's the white flag. Okay, I, I, I worried for a second that we got the checkers. Oh, boy, poor Overbay. This, I don't think this will lose him the championship lead, but it'll put Padovani a lot closer once they come into the final round. There you see our leader. Now 21 seconds ahead of second place, Mark File, the triple seven. All he has to do is cruise the car to the finish. But as we've seen, there's no such thing as safety around the mountain. Danger lurks at every turn. He comes up to Forest Elbow. This is the last of some of the very dangerous corners and that one looking nice and smooth. He's gotta be feeling pretty home free down the Conrad Strait, Taylor. He seems like it right now, but he's still got a couple of more quarters to make it through to the chase as well as Murray. So it's 
As soon as he clears those, he will be on home free, but he definitely feels confident enough that he is going to possibly challenge his teammate as we make it to the final round here on the Thursday night's Radical Series. If I am going to look forward to that final race if it, they are close on points after this. So around Murray's corner, the winner at Bathurst is going to be Jefferson Padovani, his third win of the season. That's going to take it down to the wire at Brands Hatch in a week's time. Mark File gaining himself a good haul of points from second place, having started this thing in six. The triple seven going to be your next step on the podium. And then Eric Harmon follows him home as well. I doubt he expected a podium finish from 18th place, but he managed to do it. The 617 crosses the line to spray the champagne today. Congratulations for Eric Harmon. I mean, definitely put on a good show for us, battling it out. And now the rest of the top five of Matthew Gunderson crosses the line. I'm trying to see who will be our fifth place. Will it possibly be... That we overbay. Overbay. Overbay is going to take a long time to get yeah. to there. He's he has he's going to finish on the yeah uh, on the lead lap, but because uh, Gary Schilling is a lap down and already finished. Uh, but uh, Overbay, <laughs> look at that poor car. Oh goodness, we're going to let him uh, uh, be uh, enjoy his miserable last lap in peace as we go to break here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Uh, well, during the break, you're going to see all the upcoming races here on the GSRC. But uh, after that, we've got the unofficial results as well as driver interviews. So stick around. Welcome back to Mount Panorama Circuit. Jefferson Padovani has won his third race of the season. Not something that we expected at the start of the season where we could not get a repeat winner for a long time. Uh, but Jefferson has managed to take number three and position himself very well for the championship. Mark File follows him home in second place. And Eric Harmon, who didn't even get a qualifying time in, manages to get a podium there in third. Matthew Gunderson. Uh, finishes fourth and looks like actually the last car to finish on the lead lap. I guess Overbay uh, didn't uh, get home here on the lead lap, but he does does get a top five uh, back there after looking like he gets second place. He lost a lot of points with that mistake to Badavani. Gary Schilling finishes in sixth with Christian Grisco uh, coming home seventh. Tyler Gore eighth and Karsten Quinth ninth. Then Andrew Spicer uh, rounds out our top ten. Danny Duchesne will come home in the 11th position, followed by Curlin Andrew. Had a rough start, had a great start early in the race, but then 
finished out in the barriers. Christopher Richards tried to keep the car clean as best he could, but unfortunately ran into issues. He'll finish 13th. Kenny Dufall in 14th, followed by Ronald McMenus in 15th. Richie Pittenger, 16th. Eric Luke, our pole sitter. Great run, and but a small mistake costed him big time, finishing 17th. Paul Wildridge, 18th. Daniel Barnett will finish 19th, and Phil Guillaume will round out your 20-car field. We have our winner ready to talk to us, Jefferson Padovani. And that's win number three, Jefferson. But I'd say this uh, this starting from the back method that you've elected to use is working very well for you now. <laughs> yeah, uh, again, I was not expecting good night, Joe. Uh, but uh, the problem is this track. The combination of... Um, Radical and uh, Bathurst, it's way, way, really, I think it's the most dangerous combination that we can have. The The car is difficult to handle and the track, the, 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 this track is, uh, the, the, the character, characteristics of it, it's if you have a little lose of focus, if you get a little late on the brakes, uh, you are done. So uh, I was expecting that we will have a lot of trouble on this track because the car uh, don't helps but well I, i'm impressed again i thought in the beginning I, I thought that eric and michael would be really fighting and kenny would be we would be fighting to the end but yeah this track is really dangerous well, uh, speaking uh, of fighting to the end you've got one round left now and because of the issues that that michael had uh obviously that allows you to gain some points on him with it being much closer coming into that last round, are you going to be fighting him for the the overall championship? Yeah, the guys were talking uh, to me these uh, like two minutes ago, and uh, I'm really not uh, paying attention on the numbers, but uh, and, and I, I really was not uh, wondering that this could happen. But I'm sad for him because uh, he have he had an issue uh, on the. Uh, on the f just one one lap before the final lap, and uh, I, I'm sad, but in but uh, in my point of view, uh, for for me, it's it's a benefit. So uh, it's it's good because it's it's a possibility. I I didn't thought that I could have a possibility to to uh, reach uh, to uh, to lower the, the 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 margin of the points. But now it, it it's it's true that uh, yes, it, it can happen. Uh, I still if I if I if I uh, uh, if somebody called me to to bet in somebody, I would still be betting on him on the championship. But I will do my best. I will try. I will try. I will keep trying. Well, we look forward to that. Uh, uh, we've hit a few dangerous tracks throughout the season, and Brands Hats, another one of those we hope to see in a week's time and see how it all shakes out. Exactly. All right. That was Jefferson Padovani, your winner here today. Second place, Mark File, ready to talk to Taylor Burris. Hey, guys. How you doing? Thanks for having me. Doing all right, Mark, and welcome again. A really great race you put on for us today, coming home inside the top three. I mean, tell us about the battles that you had and how you're able to just survive here at Mount Panorama. Yeah, I'll tell you what, there's a few wrecks that I had to dodge, and it was uh, very, very close. And that's definitely what prevailed me to get where I got to, because my teammate, Eric Luke, he was definitely in a fast car. I wouldn't have caught that guy. So just unfortunate bad luck for some people that helped me move along. Now, as we close out on the season, we have the last race, Brands Hatch. How do you feel as far as trying to close out the season? I know you're wanting to try to help with your teammate to get a good finish there. Yeah, the, the Hatch isn't one of my uh, favorite tracks. I'm not very good there, but I definitely uh, won't quit by any means. Put my nose to the grindstone and get after it for sure and uh, help my teammate any way I can. Of course. And then any other final thoughts you would like to say? Any sponsors, fans you would like to thank out there tonight? Oh, absolutely. I want to thank you guys. Thanks, PRL. Of course, the Alice Club, SRM, uh, the Fraley Auto Body Sponsor, guys over at HFD1 for sponsor. And, uh, you know, just all those guys help out in a big way. And uh, I love Colts. All right. Well, Mark, again, congratulations on your podium finish. And we look forward to seeing you at the final round at Brands Hatch. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. That was Mark File, your top two, finishing second place here tonight. Yes, and uh, fortunately, it looks like uh, we don't have Eric Harmon uh, with us. So 
Uh, we'll close out things in the post-race show, giving a big thank you to our sponsors, uh, starting off with HFD1 Motorsports. Again, thank you to that team for sponsoring the broadcast all season long and making sure uh, that we can bring you this incredible action to air. Also, a thank you goes out to Inspectoride. If you want to check them out, uh, that is inspectoride.com slash iRacing uh, so that uh, you can get a free download from them. Also to IESN, uh, who you see there on your screen, make sure and subscribe to the iRacing Esports Network so that you don't miss a moment of all the awesome racing that you can catch here on iRacing. Thanks to the companies that provide the software and hardware for our broadcast listed here on your screen. And additional thanks go to Eric Ekholm and June Lalonde who provide our wonderful music. See the screen for how to get a hold of more of their great work. Thanks to the team today, Taylor, Sean, and Dougie. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, including upcoming races, you can find it at globalsimracingchannel.com. And also check us out on social media. We're on Twitter at GSR Channel, Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. As we mentioned, we're going over to England for the final round at Brands Hatch Thursday, February 28th at 9 p.m. Eastern. We have upcoming races for other series listed on the screen, so check those out and mark them down on your calendar. But until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.